Welcome to another experience with the Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Today is the fifth Lord's Day after Epiphany. Please have your hymnals and Bibles ready as we celebrate in word and song. I am Clifton Brown, a local preacher serving in the Western St. Andrew Circuit. I will be the liturgist for today. The message will be brought to us by Reverend Dr. Wainford McFarland, District Conference Secretary and Superintendent Minister of the Grateful Hill and Western St. Andrew Circuits. We are truly delighted to have him deliver the message today. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m., when we gather online, we can make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship. And where possible to give full attention to God and so receive the blessings reserved for you and your loved ones. The intro it will be, we are standing on holy ground which will be rendered by the Saxthorpe Choristers. call to worship. Come, let us worship and bow down. Praise be to God. Who dare to take on human flesh and dwell among us? Praise be to God. Who did not turn back in the face of evil and death? Praise be to God. Who continues to dance through our lives even now? Let all that have breath sing praise to God. The opening hymn is Gather Christians Let's now celebrate number 375 in the Voices in Praise hymnal. Let's now celebrate. 
Let us prepare to go before God's holy throne in prayer. Lord, you make all things new. You bring hope alive in our hearts and cause our spirits to be born again. Thank you for this new year, for all the potential it holds. Come and kindle in us a mighty flame so that in our time, many will see the wonders of God and live forever to praise your glorious name. Amen. We pray together the prayer of confession. Holy, Holy God, God, we open our, our hearts to you this, this day and offer the, the truth of our lives, lives the, the fear that stifles us, the prejudice that blinds us, the ignorance that hobbles us, the doubt that plagues us. Help us, we pray that we will find courage in unlikely places, see the world with new and gracious eyes, move to those places where love is needed, and have faith that you are with us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have the assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. We are forgiven. We are set free to go out into the world and be the loving, gracious, helpful people of God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. The prayer chorus will be, Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. prepare our hearts for the ministry of a word. We pray the collect. Eternal, Eternal God, God, whose Son, son went, went among the crowds and brought, and brought healing with his touch, his touch. Help, help us to show his love in your church, church as we gather together, together. And, and by our, our lives as they are transformed into, into the, the image of Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson will be read by Sister Valerie Hines. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 9. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight 
and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come now to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading is taken from Psalm 147, 1 to 11, and 20, number 655 in the VIP. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their name. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle will be read by Sister Yvonne Brown. The epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but it not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under God's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, 
so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel will be read by Sister Lucette Cargill. The gospel is according to Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. Glory to you, O God. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. sermon today will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Wainford McFarlane, Superintendent Minister of the Grateful Hill and Western St. Andrew Circuits. Good day everyone. Welcome to this time of engagement in the Word of God as we, for another week, examine God's will for us and also examine our response to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us together to reflect yet another week on your word. Thank you for the hearts that will be impacted and the message that will be given to your people. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The Jamaica Methodist District has adopted the sub-theme, A Call to Righteousness, Truth and Holiness in Nation Building, as the focus point as we go through another triennium. This morning, I wish to draw our attention to an instance in the life of Moses, Exodus chapter 3, which was read earlier, verse 1 to 9. In this section of our reading, 
we see how God encountered Moses in what some describe as a theophany, an appearance by God to a human being. And in many other places in scripture, we see these theophanic experiences where God, the divine, encounters human beings. And in each instance, we must say at this outset, it is always to empower them for some good work. In the case of Moses, we see how he was alerted to a very strange sight, fire in a bush, but the bush was not consumed. In this strange experience, he was led to discover the God of Israel and the God who commissioned him to be a leader, a liberator for his people from bondage in Egypt to freedom in Canaan. I want therefore to use what I have discovered in my own experience as some elements of the call of God on our heart when we encounter this holy God. I would like therefore to start by asking this question, is God calling you? We see how God engaged Moses and we see how Moses responded. And the question I want you to consider this morning is, is God calling you? Make it personal. Is God calling me? What is this call? The call may be described as an inner conviction that propels you to serve God through the church. It is confirmed by a series of events, people, and situations over a period of time. It may not at first be readily recognizable nor accepted, but you sense within your spirit that you are motivated to something different. When we speak of a call to ministry, we are describing the awareness that God is directing us into some specific area of service. And the church, we believe, is the authorized body or the arena that validates or gives authenticity to that personal call. It is the arena provided by God to test our inclinations, desires, and inner promptings to offer service. It offers us the opportunity to refine the call, as well as to gain support and guidance on our response. But there are some basics of this call that we need to acknowledge. And we will use this in tandem with what we see in the experience of Moses. First of all, there needs to be a awareness, an awareness of God's breaking through into our human situation and getting our attention. In the case of Moses, it was the burning bush. It was a strange event. It was something that was out of the ordinary. It was something that caught his attention. And so he was aware that something different was taking place, something that beckons his closer inspection. And so in this awareness, Moses was certain that something different had happened. Why is that so? Moses was a shepherd. He would have been exposed to life in that area of Palestine. But nothing he had seen before could compare with that strange sight of fire in a bush, but the bush not being consumed. 
And then out of that bush and that fiery scenario came a voice. This then caused him to rec recognize that he was standing in the presence of the holy. This leads us to something else in Moses' experience. The acknowledgement of what he was seeing as the very presence of God. The acknowledgement that he was seeing God and being in the presence of God. Something we need to note here is that the place where Moses was standing became holy, not because of any inherent virtue in that place, but because God was present in that moment. So it is the presence of God that created the holiness for that place. A little later on in the development of Israel, they would set up altars and shrines to remind themselves of where they had their theophanic experiences or their encounters with God. But we need to note that it is God's presence that make the place where we are a holy place or a holy moment. And so we move then from awareness and acknowledgement through our engagement with the situation to making ourselves available making ourselves available. What was implied in that call with Moses? God was about to select Moses to be the leader of the enslaved people, his people, and he was going to use him for the next couple of years in some strange and interesting ways set out for us in the books of Exodus to Deuteronomy. Moses was not at first readily available to God because he had all kinds of excuses to what God wanted him to do. God had to assure him that what he perceived as defects or inability was in fact about to be satisfied through support by others. And so it is with us whenever we sense that we are called to do something for God, called to do something in God's church, we tend to shy away from it because of our perceived weakness, our deficiencies. But whoever God calls, God equips and will help us in that work. And that is why it is so important for us to recognize who it is that is calling us and to also note the moment that we have been called, what it is we have been called for. In the experience of Moses, he knew within himself that this was a different kind of experience and he made that assessment and later on avail himself after God's word gave him comfort to continue with what he wanted him to do. God reminded him that he heard the cries of his people, that he was about to do something, and Moses could connect with that experience because as one who had lived in Egypt, in the very house of Pharaoh, he was quite conversant with the slavery of people and the slavery that was meted out to his own kind. In fact, he had to run away from the oppressive system that was part of Egyptian life to his father-in-law, Later on, Jethro, a clansman, where he wandered and worked in 
and around that area of Palestine for many years until almost 40 years later, God called him from a burning bush to be a deliverer for his people. It was after considering all that had happened and all that God promised to him that Moses was able to say, here I am, Lord. Here am I. So the question we need to ask of ourselves this morning as we consider Moses' experience or encounter with God is, am I aware of God calling? Am I willing to follow? Am I making myself available? So let us examine what is involved with this call today. It involves desire, right motivation, and fitness. I'm indebted to writings from St. Joseph's Monastery and Retreat House, the Passionist Nuns of Whitesville, Kentucky, who invites us to reflect on what is involved when God calls someone. And the first of these three things, desire, right motivation, and fitness, says if God is truly calling you, he gives you a certain attraction, a certain positive inclination toward the life of service that you seek. Secondly, if God is calling you, he gives you the right motivation to want to dedicate your life to the service of God and his people, to want to live the gospel of Christ as fully as possible, to want to share a common vision of faith and spirituality with a community of like-minded people, spiritual, religious, and social. Right motivation, then, is implanted in us and propels us towards fulfilling of that desire. And then, of course, fitness, the third one. Do you have the ability to live the life as it should be lived? That is, cheerfully and generously. Because somehow the life itself must suit you, and you must suit the life. There should be a meshing of your personality with the requirements of a religious life. So said these passionist nuns. So, right desire, right motivation, and fitness. Do you find yourself in that place where you find within you that desire to do something for God? Where you think you have the ability and where you recognize that you'd rather do nothing else than this thing. Maybe too, that at the same time, you are struggling with questions of fitness. But that will come if we will surrender our desire to God. We move on. The religious life then is not a social club. It is a way of life that engages your total personality. And it gives you that push to serve God in a selfless way. A recognition that God will provide for you the means whereby you can live that life. We go back to Moses and we realize that Moses was not someone who thinks very highly of himself. He was really not into leading the people at first. But deep in his heart, he cared for his people. He had a desire to do something good. Other than that, he would not have defended one of his own that caused him to later kill him, or rather kill him, and then had to flee for his life. So it was the desire to be protective of his people that drove him to defend one who was fighting against his very own. So his desire was there. He had the right motivation because he had the heart to identify with an enslaved people. 
but what he struggled with was his fitness for the occasion. And I'm saying to us this morning, if we find ourselves in that place, that God, if we only submit to him, will manage that deficiency and that fitness that we think we lack. And so before I close, let me ask, how can you know God is calling? You can know God is calling through these disciplines. Prayer, reading, studying, meditating on the Bible, God's word. A talk with your spiritual leader, your minister, a counselor, a Christian counselor. Speaking with a mature Christian. Observe the events in your life. Do a time chart of your spiritual journey and note important spiritual points in that journey. Then, of course, we have the inner witness of the Spirit. The Spirit speaks to us, Romans 8, 16. Pray then for discernment. And if you keep yourself like this, in tune with God, then within that space, God will grant to you his desire for your life. I want to challenge us as we embark this year, this triennium, to pursuing a life of righteousness, truth, and holiness, that we surrender ourselves daily to Almighty God. Not thinking of how we will do or walk this life, but rather in terms of how we will give ourselves to God. The awareness that God has called us and how we make ourselves available is how God can use us to make a difference. Are you so willing to allow God to use you for some aspect of service in his church? To guide this nation, to guide people to righteousness, which really means finding favor in God's sight by the way we live, and truth, being honest with ourselves, and holiness, being separated for use by God. May God bless us to this end and guide us to lead a life that is fulfilling in his service. May we then surrender to our theophanies, our encounters with God, and not struggle anymore. May we sing, as him writer said, Here I am, Lord. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 455 in the VIP, Here I am, Lord.
Reaffirm our faith with a reading of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us human beings and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was born a human being. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father, and who with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. He, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of a world to come. Amen. We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the televised services. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly as the hymns are announced and passages are read, you will also use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged, sing, read the scriptures, and pray with us as you are prompted on screen, as if you were in physical worship. For your convenience, we share the orders of service. Use each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request the order at mainoffice at jamaicamethodist.org, and you will be added. You may also visit the district website at www.jamaicamethodist.org to download the document. We are grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on air. Please make note of contact details on screen to make your financial contribution to this effort. We need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we already have received and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. God who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are ever mindful that what we possess really belongs to you, and that we are merely stewards of these tangible gifts in serving others till you return. We thank you for those who continue 
to share in the work of proclaiming the good news of salvation through television, the internet, and the world wide web by the offering of your time, talent, and resources. We ask your blessing on the gifts we have received and those we anticipate. We further ask that you help us all to be faithful and teach us to manage these resources to advance the work of your kingdom. We pray through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us offer our intercessions before God. Lord, hear our prayer. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Let your will be done. Make us one faith to proclaim your name. Make us one. Make us one. Let us take the concerns and challenges of the people to God in prayer. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Make us one. We pray that as a church, we will honor and remember the history we share. That history that will chart a course for the future mission and ministry of this church. May we not recount our experiences as unique, but rather a tool for engagement and unity. Make us one, Lord. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Make us one. God of justice and equity, help us to be transparent in our dealings with each other. We have deserted the ideal of neighborliness, choosing to become selfish and self-promoting, rather than trying to make life better for those who are less fortunate. We pray that there will be equity in our relationships, and that as a church and nation, we will truly understand what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, make us one. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Make us one. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. O oh Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our communion hymn is, We Come Now to Your Table, Lord, number 441, in the Voices in Praise hymnal. Let us now prepare our hearts for the celebration of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper.
Let us continue with the thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, it is indeed right. It is our joy and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in the everlasting hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and, and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, God, that you have granted to us salvation in Jesus Christ. As we celebrate, may we be encouraged in our journey through life, knowing that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Bless us with the hope that transcends this life into your very presence. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with them, and they with me. Lord, Lord we, we come, come to your table, table trusting, trusting in your mercy, mercy and, and not, not in, in any goodness, goodness of our own. own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. Body of Christ, I take and eat in remembrance that Christ's body was given, and I thank you. of Christ, I take and I drink in remembrance of Christ's blood was shed. And I'm thankful. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat in remembrance that Christ's body was given for you, and be thankful. Amen. Let us now give thanks together. We thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, that you that have fed us, fed us in, in this sacrament, sacrament united, united us with Christ, and have given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Our closing hymn is Let the Power Fall on Me, number 155 in the Voices in Praise hymnal.
invite Reverend Dr. Wainford McFarlane to pronounce the benediction. And so, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore.